Hello! Battery charges for One S got quite a few of them out now and thankfully more and more of them actually do a storage charge. Today I'm looking at a Vifly Whoop Store Free which was very kindly provided by Your FPV for review. And interestingly I've had the, the original Whoop Store so I can check out what the differences are. Opening the box, some packaging, the actual charger in this nifty red colour. Uh, the power of these is like four things. You've got a DC input, you've got an XT60, and you've got USB-C. I think USB-C is really convenient for charging, especially things like this. You don't need a huge amount of amps coming through to do it. So on this, you've got the BT 2.0, which seems to be pretty popular in little quads now. And that's a PH 2.0, I think. And in here, you seem to have some flying leads in case you don't want to plug those batteries in and have them like that. I presume that's what it's for. You also get a USB-A to USB-C cable and you get some printed instructions. Not much to it because really there's not much to it, but let's go into close up. Let's see how this thing works. Compare it with a few other battery chargers and charge up some batteries because I want to take some of my little whoops flying. Just before we look at the Whoop Store 3, I'll show you what the first version looked like. This is the original Whoop Store and it looks a little bit more electronics kit. You've got a basic screen there and you've got a couple of switches. One to go between 4.35, i.e. a HV uh, battery, and back to 4.2 for a regular LiPo. And then you go between charge and storage charge. You see it jumps over to 3.8 and if I put that up, it'll go to 3.85. And then you can set the different charge from 0.2 amps up to 0.9 amps. And it's got the same BT 2.0 and the PH2s. So, Number three, I didn't get number two. Don't know what it was like. Less like a kit, which is nice. If we plug it in. It's little color OLED. It's easy to see in person, not easy to see through the viewfinder. But what we've got here is the number of amps we're putting in, the amount of volts we're getting from our input, which is USB-C, and the number of volts we're charging to. If we change the voltage set, it will go to 3.85, so that is a high voltage storage. 4.2, which is a regular LiPo charge. 4.35, which is a high voltage charge. So we've got the same things, but in one button. We've got here, if we do a short press, we go from 0.3 amps all the way up to 1.3 amps. I've got some batteries ready, and they are high voltage. So you see it's on 4.35. Again, we just go through it. 4.35 and let's grab some batteries. Got these Dogcom batteries also from your FPV which have been really good so far. So I'm gonna plug the ones I've got into these. And I've got a couple of these uh, regular beta FPV 300 milliamp hours. Put those in. And then what we do is hold down the start. And we see we get the red flashing light for them actually charging. So you can see there we're currently, well, looks like we're at 3.85 for all of them and we're putting charge into all of them. So I'm gonna let those charge. While I talk about the only potential weakness in this type of system, and it's a small one, it's a bit of a, a corner case, I must admit. My problem would be, let's say I wanted to do three of these and three of my, well, a couple of the 450s, maybe some 550s. At this type of charger only lets you do one type of charging. So it, I'd have to set it to the lowest common denominator. So these are 300 milliamp hour batteries, so I would do it at 0.3 amps. These would charge, but they'd take longer than if I did them on 0.4 amps or 0.5 amps. Equally, if I wanted to charge free and put free more to storage charge, I can't do that. It's not a particular problem. I think it's a bit of a niche use case, but if you needed to do that, the only thing currently that would do this is the JetRC Woo charger, which you can set each channel differently so they can charge at different rates. You can have some charging, some going to storage charge, some discharging, all different batteries. That is the all singing, all dancing a Whoop charger for now. But I think for most people, they will go out and fly a Whoop. And even if they want to fly two Whoops, after that gets done, about 40 minutes, we chuck a load of the 550s on and do it again. But let's come back when that's done. Okay, that's done. As each one does, it gives an audible beep so you know what's going on. So we can set that to stop and take them out ready to go. And I'm going to put some 450s on to take another quad. So here we've got the sort of 
thing I mentioned doing two different types of batteries but I'm just going to charge at 0.3 of an amp and these ones take a little bit longer but you know I'm not going anywhere for now. Next I went out and discharged those batteries in the best and more fun way that I could do which was a good laugh. Okay so when we've done our flying shove the batteries back in these little blue beta FPV ones didn't last so they're probably quite full still so then we just say voltage set to 3.85 which is high voltage um, storage and let's try and see if we can see what they're on at the moment couple around the three couple on the four still so let's get that going and they are underway oh except for number four number four says it's okay it doesn't say what it's on but it's obviously good enough so it uh, doesn't need to do anything You've got two different lights here yellow is in some sort of discharge and red is like on a slight charge that one is saying it's 3.85 but we will see the others are slightly over so they need to come down but well, i'll leave that there Let's see what happens and as you might expect those batteries are all showing okay being down to 3.85 volts each and there you go that was the vifly whoop store free quite a short video because it's quite a simple thing. You've just got a couple of buttons and it's very easy to use, which is a good thing. As mentioned, this was kindly supplied to me by your FPV. So if you're in the UK, don't forget to check out their store. There'll be a link down below and you can get all your FPV stuff there locally. Anyway, hope that review has been helpful. I will see you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.